going to call the meeting to order at 6 o'clock. Roll call. First order of business. Sage Alexander is excused. Pamela Batchelor. Call. Teresa Baxter. Here. Iris is supposed to be joining us online. Susan is excused. Susan Horowitz is excused. Susan, is it Jagers or Jagers? Yes. Okay, it's here on Zoom. Michelle Jones? Yes. Here? I haven't got to you yet, so. <laughs> Danielle Cavani? Not here yet. Eve Lacey? Jennifer Miller? Yes. Melanie Mineski? Here. Here. Oh, didn't see you there. <laughs> Nettie Pendant? Here. Jenny Revelino. Yes, okay. Sydney Tiger, that's me. And Scott, I'm sorry, can you pronounce your guy's last name? Tillian. Tillian? Tillian. Okay. You don't pronounce the first tone. Mm -hmm. Well, you're in French, but I didn't tell you. Great. And there's one C and Rain has arrived. And there's a little bit of party. You want me over there? Danielle.
been in Colorado my whole life and just really interested in um, contributing to the community. So really excited to be here and uh, thanks for us all. <laughs> And Scott Tillian. All right. Um, I recently retired from planning director at the school district. I was a city planner here in Longmont way back. So um, I'm back in. I'm uh, going to meetings like I did in the old days. But uh, um, this is more fun to me, art. Um, I had a lot of you know, crazy public meetings before as a planner, but um, I'm, I'm an artist at, at heart, I do art, and um, so this was my love to do, so glad to be here. Yes, how about a big welcome for us? Friend, but then I saw 
the most fun to have as a friend. And I have to say, the most fun fictional character to have as a friend would be Winnie the Pooh. Oh. Oh. I would totally be on board with the Hundred Acre Woods, hanging out there all day, having the kids, finding the money. I would be all over it. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm struggling with this, but I'll say what am I the go-to person for my social family circle? Um, if you don't know me already, I work for a brewery, so usually I'm the go-to person for any of your alcohol needs. <laughs> <laughs> and also event planning. I plan a lot of events, so I feel like if anybody needs help with any of that, I'm usually the go-to person. So, yeah. Noted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you ever need <laughs> um, I feel like one and three kind of go together for me. Um, I am Boulder County's fastest knitter. I would say that's the quirky well, thing about me. So I, <laughs> I'm always years. knitting. If I'm not knitting, I'm probably doodling. So um, I definitely can't sit still. And that's also what I am a go-to person for. If you need a knit hat or you need a graphic design, usually my family comes to me. <laughs> And I'm Melanie Nesky. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I don't know, this is very hard for me, but I guess one quirky thing about me is when I when we go on vacation, one of the things that I like to do, this is gonna sound really strange, I love to visit grocery stores. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's very weird, but I'm not like especially little local, I don't know, I think usually wigglies. I don't know. I've never been to a piggly wiggly, but yeah, yeah. especially <laughs> regional kind of you know, right. especially store space section. Anyway, I know that's sort of a weird thing to do on vacation, but. To each other. I'm Jennifer Miller, and um, I am the juror and judge of the fastest knitter and crochet project every year. <laughs> I missed a few years because one year I had COVID and some other things have happened, but. Melanie wins every year. Why do we even have this competition? <laughs> I can't compete this year, though, so. You can't? I can't. I'm going to no. be getting married. Oh, that's right. You're going to be getting OK, well, we're going to see who's going to who's take the title the for the year. I guess, <laughs> yeah, of course I'm kidding. Um, the, I, I would like to be friends with Georgia O'Keeffe. Um, I think I have studied her quite a bit, and I teach in Santa Fe a week-long class on her and her artistic inspiration. And um, she is pretty amazing. And I think she was actually pretty warm and ordinary from what the way they present her. She was pretty warm and ordinary, although she was like genius and determined to have her own vision. Yeah, see his steeplets. I'm going to New Mexico. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You want to marry him all that bad? Somehow he talked her into it. Yeah. She was like 20. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm Michelle again. I would. I'm going to go two prong. Um, I am. I would say go to person in in my like social family circle for telling it like it is. Even though it's not an easy journey for me to get there. But when like stuff is kind of built up and there's something, you know, elephant in the room, whatever saying, uh, I feel like I'm the one that's like, I can't take it anymore. <laughs> Talk about this. Um, but then and quirky, just because that was kind of quick, uh, quirky about me in my life, I got I got engaged during the pandemic and um, it was so frustrating and overwhelming to think of a traditional wedding. And I already knew that for many reasons beforehand that I eloped this year. Um, at Callahan House oh, um, with my parents to my partner Matt um, and we have both of our sets of parents there. We did a first dance to a Barry Manilow song <laughs> um, and took a bunch of pictures, super fun and celebrated by going to a um, space, virtual reality space station visit in Denver. Um, and it was basically you put on a VR, VR headset and you walk into a room and you feel like you're on the International Space Station. Oh. In the wedding dress and oh. the tux. Oh. And the tux and the tux. It was just a nice suit that you could wear again. But um, yeah, that was, that was really fun. Congratulations. Thanks. Uh, so Jenny, again, I would say probably the quirkiest thing about me is my career. I've had a really weird winding road. I've been everything from a sushi chef to an airplane technician, um, and somehow or another wound up in 
Hey, Sharp. So, oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <I'm sorry. laughs> well, I'm Pamela Bachelor, and I guess um, I don't know if it's quirky or not, but um, most people who know me wouldn't would think that I studied opera. I was in Opera Colorado for ten years, so I was an op a professional opera singer for a really long time, and I have a degree in voice performance. Oh, wow. Hi, I'm Nettie, and um, I I don't think I'm quirky, but I think my friends think I am. <laughs> but um, I am definitely a water person, and if I'm anywhere near water, I have to get in it. And let's see, I went on a trip uh, last winter, and I got into the ocean when I really shouldn't have. <laughs> Like, there was a couple that got, I watched them get in and out ahead of me, and when they walked out, I said, how was it? And they said, it was um, thrilling and terrifying. <laughs> and, and I went in anyway. <laughs> That's it. Um, I'm Megan Peters. I am the fund development manager here at the museum, and I would say I am the go-to person uh, I am the planner. I am the oldest daughter and the Virgo, and I will tell you what we're doing and when we're doing it and how it's going to be done. Period. I'm near my sister. Yes, yes. <laughs> I, yes, I am many people, but yeah, I will let you know what's happening. Between the two of you guys, we got everything covered. Yeah. <laughs> notable person that I'd like to meet would be Picasso. I, I think it's just, if you look at his work, I'd like to understand his brain and just sit down and go, what were you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm Susie Velgo Farring. I'm the council liaison. Um, those of you who are new. I'm thinking I'm going to go with number one, something quirky about me. So, I don't know if you know, like, my line of work is kind of stressful. <laughs> Not just the TG, but city council as well. And so for downtime, and I think even the, like, the last, I don't know, 10 years, things have, just the political climate, everything's just like, there's, it's just a lot of negativity out there. So something I do to decompress is watch the, like, little cat videos, videos, <laughs> and just to kind of just to laugh, nothing, I mean, just like 30 seconds. I did find one recent over this, at the beginning of summer, and it's actually this comedian, Nate Russ, who does the uh, hashtag buggin. So he's created like these little one minute reels of um, what bugs do when they come out for the summer. And so it's like this whole, it's like days of our lives, but with bugs. <laughs> so Eric, I'm on number, so now he's at number 34. And it's just like, like a minute, it's not very long, but it's hysterical. And I just, just to laugh and just to kind of get away from at all. But yeah, it's like when he misses a day, I'm like, dude, where are you? Oh, oh. <laughs> You're way stalker. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's kind of weird, but. Uh, so I've had time to go through about 14 or 15 of my quirks while they're <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, no, I got to narrow it down. Um, uh, so I'm a mountain climber, and uh, I was born in Nebraska, but I, I love 14 or so. I've climbed them all, and I've climbed um, many of them like five or six times. And I produced, I proposed to my wife on 14 er and um, uh, all my boys climb 14 ers my two boys. So some think that's a little quirky of my attachment to mountains and 14 ers coming from the flatlands. <laughs> Way. <laughs> How long did it take to climb all of them? Uh, so I started in 1980, and then um, I finished the last one in 2016, but I had done so many of them like multiple times. Mm -hmm. But So there was a period when I, the boys were little that I didn't climb so much. Um, I didn't want their dad to die like when they were little or something. <laughs> I took a break, but um, when they were climbing with me and then they got better, 
and then they started rock climbing and sport climbing. But I thought, oh, okay, I can just go back. <laughs> And Susan, will, I'm, do you know which one you're doing so I can stop sharing my screen and put your face back up? Okay. I'm navigating. Yes. All right, there we go. So I'm going number one, and um, actually I'm doing it right now. We have a 2001 year old man. Um, her name is Sally. And um, so Sally takes us on all sorts of great adventures, and we're on our way to one uh, right now. My husband and I are on our way to Silverton. And uh, we just love uh, to go around. Um, she's been all over the place and, uh, and explore and camp and have a good time. Alright, back to this. Thank you, everybody. Moving on to number four, public invited to be heard. Welcome, Megan Peters. Perfect. We're going to discuss the museum expansion support. Tell us. Yes. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me. Um, so I think most people in this room know, and if you don't, I'm certainly happy to talk your ear off about it. But the museum is expanding. It is very exciting. We um, have added and renovated some, some staff offices and support space just so we can internally be in a little bit better of a place. As I'm sure you may have noticed, the courtyard was torn out and renovated and with a brand new pavilion. And then the next phase will be we are renovating the entrance area and the gift shop as well as adding a new larger flexible gallery space and building a dedicated children's gallery. So a lot of very fun, exciting stuff happening. More excitedly, we are 86% of the way funded towards our $8.1 million goal. Yes, it's mm -hmm. been amazing. Yeah. Um, in nine months, the community has really stepped up and, and really the individual donations have been amazing and inspiring and, and really wonderful. And so we are celebrating this expansion and we are celebrating the community and we are hosting the museum's inaugural Sunset Soiree on Saturday, September 7th. This is actually the first fundraiser for the museum that the museum has ever hosted in over 80 years. So we are very excited. Um, it will include a wonderful dinner. I met with the caterers today. It's going to be delicious. Cocktail hour, open bar, and then we are going to culminate the event with our first concert in the new courtyard with the Flatirons Jazz Orchestra. So I have some invitations. Some of you may have gotten them in your mail. I and mean, you know, I was like, oh, look at that. We're we got it. We got it. <laughs> but we would love for everyone in this room to attend. We'd love for you to invite your friends, invite your family. The more the merrier. Um, I'm also thrilled to say that tickets are actually selling fairly quickly. So um, they went live yesterday and we've already sold out four tables, which has been really exciting. So no pressure, but uh, we'd love for you to buy your tickets sooner rather than later. And I will leave these where I am. Please feel free to take as many as you would like. And I'm happy to answer any questions if anyone has them. Otherwise. I hope to see you in September. But Megan, why is the museum expanding? Because, <laughs> such a good question, the museum's expanding because we've outgrown our space, which is truly amazing. We are, as you can see, every room has multi-usage. Um, our exhibitions team, who I could go on and on about how amazing they are, are turning over exhibits so quickly and it's such a such an intense pace and they want to do more so they want larger space so they can show off more of our collections bring in more rentals bring in larger rentals from around the world um, and then I don't know if I'm sure Angela and Laura tell you this all the time but for those of you who don't know we do also a lot of in-house builds so the current Lego exhibit was pretty much a hundred percent built in-house which is incredible by three human beings um, who we are fortunate enough to work with every day. So we are expanding because the community has demanded that we expand. We are not keeping up with the need and we want to be a place of community for everyone to come and gather. We're so fortunate to have the auditorium and be able to offer a lot of amazing public programming, but the courtyard will mean that we can host bigger and more events. Um, 
our summer concerts are going to be even nicer because there's not going to be that huge divot in the middle of the grass anymore so people can really sit. And then, as I'm sure you know, Longmont is growing at a rapid pace and with that we're seeing a lot of young families and so the need for a dedicated children's gallery um, is something that we have been aware of for a long time and we've really heard about and we want to fulfill that need. There's not a ton in this close-knit area that offers that um, and it'll just be a really good opportunity to engage our museum goers from birth until death. Um, <laughs> we want you here. Lifelong life 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 learners, that's the word. That's the word I'm looking for. That's the word. Uh, yeah. And celebration so like right? So, yeah, so it's very exciting. Um, the, the renderings are truly just gorgeous. And I'd offer to show them to you now, but you can see them on September 7th when you come and learn more about what the future of the museum looks like. And selfishly, of course, because this is a city project, Park and Public Places will, of course, receive 1% of the construction line. So it's also an amazing opportunity for an impending giant piece of something, rather or another. So that's going to be something in your future. Um, as well as I would say that our local art community continues to look at the museum for opportunities and, uh, you know, Artists across the board want to be showing more, demonstrating more, um, and from the exhibitions team, they struggle often from the one gallery that we really have between family friendly and fine art, and so this is an opportunity to be able to serve both and then uh, continue to bring in curators and experts from different lenses and different fields, so it's not just people in this house that are telling the stories, but in fact that we're opening it up and allowing people to tell the stories of, of their exhibitions too. So um, now they can ask questions. Okay. Just kidding. <laughs> None? Zero? That's okay. So well, take one of these and then you can also learn more about the expansion and the event at um, our dedicated expansion website, which is supportlogmopmuseum.org. Okay. And it's September 7th, Susan. September 7th. 6 to 9. Saturday. Saturday, September 7th, 6 to And we'll put that, we'll send it to you email, right? Yes. As well. Yeah. Yep. Excellent. Thank you. That sounds Thank fun. you. Yeah. Hope to see you all there. Okay. Now to the actual business, finally. Additions and corrections to the June 20th minutes. Does anybody have any additions or corrections? Okay. We did it right, exactly perfect the first time. This is often good. Don't say that. I don't think we So, Eve uh, moved to approve the minutes as written. Any second? All second, Pamela. All in favor? Eleven. That's right. Can we, um, do we count? people that work there? So technically, if you weren't at the meeting, yeah. you shouldn't vote on the minutes if they're accurate or not because you wouldn't know. So, yeah. so then the way that it will go is a yay, a nay, and an abstention. Want to try again? Yeah. Hey, you get everybody started, right? Everybody that was there want to vote to approve the minutes? One, two, three, four, five, six, or seven. Five, six. Barely. Any opposed? And all those people who didn't vote yes. Or weren't in the at the meeting. One. Abstention. Yeah. Four. Five. Five. Great. And that makes eleven. Is that how many we have? Mm -hmm. That's we're Excellent. Out. Oh, and Susan. Susan she's six. six. Oh yeah, she was six, yes. So that's six. six. So that's twelve. Six eyes, zero nays, six abstentions. Additions and corrections to tonight's agenda. Any? I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, thank you. Okay, none. Council comments? Susie. Okay, so we have a packed agenda on Tuesday night. Um, looking at our general business, we will be discussing, um, so, you know, there might be some items that you all will be interested in. One of them is getting the open space 
stale sales tax, extending that tax in perpetuity um, for our open space. So we'll be having a discussion and information back from staff about the language and getting that put on the ballot. So we did initially, I think it was in 2007. So I think in 2001, there was an, a tax or a ballot measure for having open space sales tax. And then in 2007, we voted to uh, have it until 2034. And now, as you know, staff is looking at long-term plans, acquiring land, sustainability of the land we have, they're, really make, they're already making plans for 10 years and more out. So uh, we've decided to put this on, measure on the ballot to have the tax continue on in perpetuity. So that, you know, if, so in the effort to sustain the lands we have, acquire any other land that we should be acquiring for preservation, that we, we have the capacity to do that. Um, so that we'll have a discussion on that on Tuesday. We will also be discussing the, uh, the water rate study, um, possibly having to increase our water fees because of the additions. So with the changes to the Nelson Flanders and uh, but the water tanks that we're having to, to repair, some of the things that have happened in inflation, um, supply chain and additional problems that are occurring. So we'll be hearing the full scope of that study on Tuesday, so if anyone wanted to listen into that as well. And then, um, so the work that we're doing with, we're also joint um, commissioners to the Longmont Housing Authority, and one of the projects that we are working on is a, a family. So we have a lot of senior living. We have, I think we have one Aspen, uh, Aspen neighborhood that is a family uh, development, but we really don't have more than that. So a lot of our housing through the housing authority is for, is for seniors. So we do have, um, we had a plan in the works for a new project, it's Ascent, and that's at Hover Crossing. So there's a piece of land that the city owns or the housing authority that's slated to have housing in that spot. And we've um, decided to put family housing. So these apartments, that will be part of the housing authority will actually be one through four bedroom apartments. And we've been able to look at, um, get acquire funding, grant opportunities to have an early childhood facility there. And so right now we're looking at partners, Wild Plum is one that we're in collaboration with, to have um, ha um, affordable daycare. So low, low to no cost daycare for residents who live there, Whoever doesn't take it, and if open spaces, then we can push that out to public. And then the other thing is, um, I don't know if anybody heard or saw the last council meeting. We had a pre-session to discuss our council member Martin, mm -hmm. who actually is having to deal with some personal issues. And so she's out of state right now. She's been joining us virtually since May. And we're getting to a point of, you know, residency. Us as council, we cannot tell her she needs to go. She has to make that decision on her own. I'm really kind of throwing this out there to hear feedback, especially those who live in War Two. So you know, get you know, send us emails. Let us know what you know what your thoughts are. And as we're we're moving forward, on um, we've got to do something. We gave her the the timeline of we can no longer continue virtual past December 31st. So she's going to have to really, you know, make some decisions and come back to us and what, you know, the next steps. Do we do a special election, which could be upwards of 300,000, or do we appoint someone until November of 2025? So it's just, it's a lot, but I, I think it's really important that we hear from the Ward 2 residents, especially, but the community at large. And I believe, I'm going to go kind of fast, but, <laughs> but yeah, does anyone have any questions for me? Okay. Thank you for the work you do. It's yeah. so stressful. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay, moving on to item number eight, Shocker. And Laura is going to tell us what the source. Oh, the winning boxes are over there. Oh, oh cool. You can look at them on the way out or whenever. But those are the top vote getters in our public 
uh, voting. So. How many votes do we have? We're going to go. Yes, I will. I'll just publish it. Let's see this button. Did everyone get an email saying thank you for voting for the shotgun? Yes, and I said that's so bad. I know. That was so cool. That was great. Yeah, ooh, look at that. Well, and to say honestly, um, one of the the reasons for saying hey, thank you very much for for voting, and we got your vote, is also to to make sure that all five's email addresses are valid. So, <laughs> Susan, can you see my screen? Shocker. Okay. Great. Okay. Well, Susan will just hang out over. So. Shock Art 2024, I think, was a very successful program this year. Um, I really think that we had some of the best applicants uh -huh. we've ever had. Uh -huh. um, the strength of the quality was just amazing. It almost made me sad to count all the votes because I wanted more than six to win. Um, so, let's get into it. So we had a total of 1,122 votes, and it was all in person this year. We did not have any virtual votes. And I was hoping also to capture two different audiences, so Old Town Marketplace, as I abbreviated as OTM, and then Museum. So it was beginning in Old Town Marketplace for about three weeks, and then we moved over here for the last three weeks. We ended voting on July 13th. So we actually had a pretty even amount of voting, which I was really, really pleased about because right now the courtyard is closed, so we just don't generally have as many people coming through during the summer. So that was awesome. I was very, very happy to see those numbers. <coughs> of, oh, of those numbers, oh no. Um, the most percentage was adults at Old Town Marketplace, and then, um, the kids were 11%, so it was a little over 51% for Old Town Marketplace voting. And then Museum actually brought in a lot more kid votes than I was expecting, um, which was great. Um, it was really fun just seeing the real difference in opinions of the number one, the adults and the kids, but also from the people that were voting from Main Street to the Longmont Museum. So the clear front runners were always in the front, but then the middle kind of started shaking out right at the end. Um, in terms of where the demographics of people were coming from, 54% were from Boulder County, and then 33% were from Colorado, which includes our neighboring counties, which are obviously very close to us. So Denver, uh, Weld County, <laughs> and Larimer County. And then only 7% of people were outside of Colorado, and then 6% didn't give me that information. All right. So compared to last year, we did have online voting and in-person voting. We had 170 less in-person voting than this year. Then online voting, we had 276. So we have a, a little bit close to 100 less votes this year compared to last year which I still think is a really good number. Yeah. And then from 2022, we had 708 people voting in person, which is 414 less than this year. But then online voting, we had 939, which I think is uh, from the COVID voting because we had such strong presence with COVID voting and then it's kind of tapered off. So we have, uh, in this year, less 525 votes than from 2022, um, but from the presentation that I did last year about online voting, we did generally get less people who lived here voting from outside of Boulder County. So I think that we're capturing an audience that is genuinely here at Longmont, comes to Longmont, visits Longmont, they live here, they work here, they play here. So I think that it's really nice to see that that demographic really come and actually enjoy our space and um, you know shop in our community and come to the museum and um, yeah it was just it was awesome and they're growing up here they're coming to the museum they're engaged and then they look around the community and they see something that they were a part of having in their community and I think that that's reaching demographics as we talk about diversifying and we talk about reaching youth like this is a good first little step. And it shows in the numbers, clearly. All 
right, so uh, winners are stacked here, but I just wanted to go through them. Um, let's see how I can get Susan. I think if you push the one little line at the top. Oh, there we yeah. go. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, Wiener Dogs, uh, strong winner. Clearly, <laughs> very, very cute. How can you not love dogs and sunglasses? Um, this abstract kind of landscape, moons. Uh, people really, really love that one. The jellyfish was an interesting one because it was a very strong favorite for the kids. Um, and it's just funny because we live in a land of or, yeah, landlocked state and then we have the jellyfish. Uh, this one was also a pretty big fan favorite. Um, these just very well rendered birds. And then um, this is an artist that we actually have in the shop art collection over three times, so she, this will be her fourth box. This is Megan Sage. This one was top of the votes the entire time. Really? It literally did not move from number one the entire time I was counting. Mm -hmm. um, and everyone's like, ew, I don't like snakes. And I'm like, oh, yeah, but I don't know. There's just something so weird and appealing, and she just rendered it so well. Mm -hmm. And then this one is um, bees, but they're not bees. They're like fairies. But yeah, it's very cute. Okay. Very cute. Yeah. All right, and then I just wanted to kind of point out, we can't really see here too much, but um, these are the seven boxes that we have slated for the new paintings. So we have uh, a bunch that are kind of spread out. Last year we had a bunch in the southwest. This year we have a bunch in the northwest. We have one in the northeast, one directly east, right in the middle here, and then one in the south. South-ish west, south-ish, yeah, south-ish west. And then, now, oh no, go back. So, we are going to vote for your favorites. I have given you this little piece of paper. It is less the numbers that are already winners. You get four votes. Okay. And we're trying to get to one. There will be one commissioner's choice. You can't vote for the same box four times. You get to choose four boxes. Okay, so I'm going to go through all of the boxes that are available to be voted on. Back to my class. Yeah. I'm taking a grad class on linguistics. Oh, wow. <laughs> Thanks. Does anybody need a pen? But I'll be back. Yeah. Okay. It is tough. My question is about this. A lot of information. You're going to go through all of these numbers. But you are the best level. Which ones do you like the best? And if I get seven, I get the best. You better cut down the price. Yeah, I'm not getting things done. All right, everybody knows the process? Thumbs up. Yes. Okay. And I'll go through them again. So this is just the beginning, and then we'll go through again, and then you will vote, and then we will tally. Okay. Okay. So here's box one. Box two. Box three. Box four, box six, box seven, box eight, box nine, box ten, twelve, thirteen. 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 23, 24, 25, 26, 28, 29, 30, 
32 and 33. Everybody got four? <laughs> that was not easy, was it? Yeah, so. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
um, and then I can look at it that way if that works for you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, okay. I've seen number two one more time. Thanks. I just can't tell. I'm like confused on that one. Some reason. I think it's Fox. Fox. I like that's what I thought. I was just like I was like there's so much going on, and I was yeah, like Fox, Fox is in it. Okay. Well, yeah. They're doing yeah. the mom so will you show these as we vote? Yes. Thanks. Okay. Everybody have their four votes yes. written yes. out. Okay. No. All right. So show of hands. Who's doing one vote for number one? So three. Okay. Two. It's one. Three, four, two, six, oh, wait, where did four go? You just oh, five is zero. This is what happens when I'm doing two. Four is three, yep. <laughs> yes, so six, one, seven, one, two, three. Oh wait, there's four. four. Oh wait, there was a so number seven. There was a one, slow. two, three, four. Four. Plus um, Susan also voted for okay. seven. So that's, that's actually five. We don't have anything on the proof. Okay, eight. Here. Nine. One. I like dragons. There's <laughs> 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 Nice. Wow. Wow, that's a new one. I know. I think this one could be real good inside of her. Twelve. Three here. Sixteen. Seventeen. One. Two. Two. Oh, seventeen. Two. Yep. Eighteen. Is that the last one? 
just nope. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. <laughs> it's cars or plants. Cars or plants. All right. Cars.
the idea, of course, of the piece is that there are these bicycle cogs and they have some negative space through them that has some mesh and the mesh is colored. And then um, there are four bicycle pedals which will serve as benches. And the location of the piece is actually right next to the bike pump park, which is the first of its amenity of its kind in any of our parks in the city. Um, and the bicycle chain itself is actually repurposed from a ski, uh, a ski lift lift. Um, so everything here is 10 times the size or some gargantuan uh -huh. scale up of what is actually reality. Um, so it is this kind of very whimsical, but also functional. And then of course you'll see the um, leaning into the uh, referential imagery of Longmont. So the one on the left with the very abstract mountains is the newest branding pieces from the Longmont logo. And then the one on the right is a more um, figurative stylized version of the, uh, the piece. So this is approved internally and we have, uh, the artist has the contract presently. So we are moving forward, which is wonderful. Um, so here's just another look of, there won't be any footholds along this uh, chain for climbing because that's our number one concern. Uh, mesh, so people won't be able to like launch themselves up. All the corners of course will be rounded and then the ADA compliant height of the uh, benches as well as the fall zone is actually, this rendering is very close to the edge of the concrete and it will be a little bit further away. Um, our parks folks are very excited. And so um, here's a look at the park, if you will, Heather Hill and Old Ranch. All of this is a very south portion of, of the town and new development. And so this is turf, uh, this is playground, shelter, and your amenities for your uh, restrooms and things along those lines. There's an orchard of fruit bearing trees over here, which is was one of the options for our artists, but actually oddly, I thought oddly, uh, none of the artists uh, went in the direction of putting something in the orchard area, but pretty cool. It'll be years and years and years until the fruit bearing, but there it is. And then this on the northern side is the bike pump park. Um, and so from the neighborhood, there is a concrete trail that comes in this way. There's also one that comes in from the east. And then our benches will serve as a the little reprieve right right here. Um, so it's it's looking really good. We're going to head. ahead. Do we have any questions about Clover Meadows project? I'd like to say that I saw the first rendition with the chain of the one at the top, and I like this one even better. I'm in complete agreement because I was on the panel. I, I like this better as well. Yeah, I like the I, I like the mesh in the spoke in the spokes, I'm going to call it, mm -hmm. so that you can't like put your head in there or yeah. trap or anything like <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. And I like the they really look with the pedals, benches, they look good. I like this even better. I think, yes. Yes. I think it's great. What is this mesh made out of? It's metal kind of mesh. You ever been on a playground that there's like a, a metal mesh that almost has like a rubberized treatment over the top of it? Okay, that's what I thought. So the fingy holes, like there won't be, it will be so tight of mesh that little kid fingers won't be able to get in. Good. Good. And the construction, as I understand, is somewhat of a sandwich. So you'll have, you know, metal on the outside, meshy on the kind of inside, and then metal on the outside. So any of these lines that in the rendering, of course, looks like places where you would be able to step and launch yourself, like those are, you know, <laughs> tiny, tiny spaces. Not the picnic benches out of the right. a... Yeah, so he and I went back and forth with height today, and I think the, you know, the overall length of the piece is going to depend, be dependent upon the installation, of course, but I think that our maximum height is like 90 inches. So it's still, you know, relatively gargantuan. I love the way it looks like the chain goes under the sidewalk. Yeah. I like this really a lot. Yeah, I agree. As for public art, I would say this is, this is very successful. I've never seen anything like this before. Wow. Really cool. nice, nice resolution. Oh, yeah. Great. So, kind of another great. Great. The best. <laughs> all right. So, you let us know when the contract's all signed. And... Like, seriously, I don't know what he's doing tomorrow, but he said that he was doing it. And we're so fancy, of course, that we require ink 
and an organization. <laughs> oh, yeah. And you can't email it to me, right? You have to send it in ye old fashioned FedEx, so by Monday, I don't think. You guys um, don't use DocuSign? Nope, not for this. And the reason is because, this is, I think this is fascinating on her, because it is work for hire, and there is a section in there that they have to be uh, understanding that they are not an employee of the city, but in fact are work for hire. That somehow or another, notarization is more binding yes. in the legally legally world than a simple docu sign for this. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, that that is, it's not even the mayoral signature that's yeah, the doctor sign it's problem. It's the, the differentiation of employee and then of course subsequently all of the insurance requirements, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. We will not pay your workman's comp when you, know, you are welding and you make mistakes or something. You know, so so I yeah, I asked that question though. I was like, are we grown up enough yet? Angela. <laughs> and it's all of our we will every contract that I ever do. Even the shocker ones. I would be. I'll make it nice. And I think you pretty funny. So I know I'm massively leaving ahead, but okay. 10. Yes. You get the contract on Monday. I don't know. What is the ETA for this? He has already begun fabricating and putting pieces together, which, you know. That's his decision. That's what we know. But I think that these are some of the, because it's, um, upcycled materials, I think that these are some things that he has in his shop, yeah. and he's been working on composition. I set him up with structural engineers who um, do artwork here in uh, Colorado, or are stamp approved for Colorado, and he has that all lined up, so I think he's like ready to fabricate and get out here pretty quickly. Um, and then the Parks Department is already talking to me about their um, concrete timing. So I think we could be moving real quick. We could be installing when the weather is nice and the ground isn't frozen. Like this September, October? No. November, January maybe? Depends on what kind of winter we have. Mm -hmm. But if the concrete's in, then the rest of it is cake. Yeah. Um, it's the concrete. That, yeah. I'm so happy about it. But I mean, when I say spring at the latest, like February. Okay. And the park is technically supposed to open end of September. So if, as soon as he can fabricate and we can install, we'll be right in the mall. Sorry, any other questions? You want me to just keep going? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, number 10, Fox Meadows Park. So Fox Meadows Park, the selection panel of seven, that's five residents and two of you, um, reviewed 77 viable applications and received over 100 of them, but everybody wants to do a mural. And this isn't a mural project, so whatever. Um, so 77 applications that were viable, of those knocked them down to, of course, 20%, uh, uh, and then sat together, had their meeting, in June to get the short list down to three um, final candidates. Those candidates uh, agreed to put proposals together and those presentations will be happening Monday, this upcoming Monday, in this room. Um, we'll be starting at promptly at 4 p.m. At 4 p.m. I'm going to be giving the overview of the process, how it's happening, show everybody the matrix by which you vote. So, um, so it's an equitable process. We're looking at the scope of work. We're looking at what it is that we are looking to receive. Um, risk management and I sit down Monday morning and go through, uh, but I've looked at them and I think that we have three fantastic options. I really think everyone is gonna be very pleased. Um, so that's wonderful. Um, I haven't seen the timelines. I haven't seen how the budget shake out. I just looked at our, uh, so there's that. Uh, three artists, uh, two of them will be in person, one of them will be on Zoom. We're going to start with one in person, then we're going to stop and have some nosh and dinner, sit down and watch the Zoom one, and then have the next in person one, a uh, little bit of a break, uh, while not discussing our work, of course, by a break and fill your water bottles. Ooh. And then um, we'll have a public invited to be heard for three minutes. I 
can't imagine who knows the person per person similarly to um, city council i would be surprised if we didn't get a handful of residents from this neighborhood who are passionate about what they want to see and i can't wait to hear what they say because i think we really knocked this one out of the park it's a little on the nose but that's just me um and then we'll have discussion uh, amongst ourselves, uh, everybody, you know, again, public invited to be heard means if you are not on the selection panel, you are public invited to be heard. It's usually pretty organic. I think the conversations are pretty organic. Uh, and then we'll have the selection panel vote. So uh, this is a rendering, of course, of what the park looks like, but I think that it's actually relatively uh, is this, accurate. Is this, is this really it with the sledding hill of the It really is. I'm there every Sunday. It really okay, is super exciting about Before we, you said that that wasn't good. Well, okay, so the fenced off area is no, no, no longer. So you ready to see the real? You're going to be so impressed because this is what it looks like. <laughs> it's actually that. So where the dog park was is now um, native seed. The, this, okay, so because we flood, we have to make these parks to yes. be retention ponds, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Um, so this is actually culvert, like to take, I'm probably using not the right words, but you know what I'm saying. Um, area where water goes down and then in the middle of a flood, this is what starts to fill up. So this is all native seed. This is evocative of trees. This, there's a giant electrical line that goes along here. So depending upon what park it is and its uh, size, I'll have to pull in, a, we'll, we'll have to pull an electrical easement. So depending on what it is, there might not be a lot of wiggle room here. Risk management does not want any sculpture along here, so we're not confusing play things with sculpture. I was like, mm. that's fine. Um, roundabouts are out. Uh, up along that area, there's native seed um, there, but then this is all lawn, and then there's all of this area, um, and then there's two big corners, I would say, from entering, so this could be one area, and that could be the other. The only negative piece about this is that those are houses right there. House, 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 house. And I love our neighbors, but sometimes I don't like having those conversations of we're putting a big thing right there. So um, depending upon what it is, uh, you know, the siding is variable, but I think we're just going to have to be really smart about about placement. Is there a sledding hill? There is. That yeah. On top. Right along the top, that's all mm -hmm. where you can slide down. It's yeah, like so it tapers down. Yeah. And it's because when they excavate, of course, to, to make detention area for drainage, they have to put the earth somewhere. Yeah. So they're just going to make the good. hill even higher. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. yeah. They're pretty really smart. Do you know what the chest tables are going to look like? Like the built into where. Say one more time. The chess tables, are they like, do they have the board on the table? I don't know. I'm really excited about the bocce ball. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. super excited about that. About the what? Ball. Bocce ball. Bocce ball. Bocce yeah. Bocce ball. Uh, so this is design build. So at any given moment when something comes back and it is astronomically too expensive to do, the list on the left, on the right rather, is all the things that they can start taking away because they can't afford it. But I mean, <laughs> construction's happening. So, but sledding hills will likely very much be there. Yeah, any questions on that one? This is a, probably a spring installation. Has anybody RCD to Angela for Monday that hasn't already? Or we could just do raise hands now. Oh, it's planning on coming for- I told her. Yes, yeah. one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I'm willing to help her. Whatever you need. Okay. I will need volunteers um, to greet artists and oh, yeah, okay. um, also to help me gather questions. Um, do you want to help me with that? Sure. Okay. I'm totally on board for the cleaning up. Thank you. Because they <laughs> never, they never want to leave. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you. Any questions about Fox Meadows? And what, what time will we finish up, do you think? I moved everything up as early as I could so we weren't here until 9 o'clock, but... Probably 8, between 8 and 9. Okay, all right. It'll be a long night. I will be And don't forget to, to keep track of your hours. 
That's missing a number of tiles, and then the same kind of thing holds true. I'm going to call it stucco. I don't think that's in fact the, the material, but some sort stuff. of that. Yeah. Um, so all of that is going to be repaired, stabilized, and then a sealant, obviously, on all of this to help with our graffiti problems. Um, <laughs> is, can I ask, are all the new people, do you know where this installation is? Yeah. Know sort of the south, south north. north. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's just right across here from the museum. If you just went straight across the uh, well, that turns into Missouri. Uh, yeah, I mean, and that half obviously is, is 
you know, highly trafficked with our neighbors. And then the other components, um, there's a couple of benches, there's a couple of other components, um, some of which we can do in-house, some of which we're going to have to talk for another day. So um, so the treatment, the maintenance treatment that was just, uh, that you voted on previously is, is these two pieces. So. Hopefully by the time we talk next, I can tell you that it's done. That's the goal. Like, it's, it's not going to take a long time. It's just agreeing on Excellent. Yeah. Are they cleaning up the graffiti as well? Yes. Okay. That's what well, I, I mean. That's I was just like I'm honestly kind of surprised that we're keeping them up now, like after all said and done. So that was part of the delay was because I had to add to the work scope because of before there was no the graffiti, graffiti on it. Totally. And so then the conservator came back out to see if they had materials that they thought would even be able to clean it up. Because if they didn't think that they could clean it up, then I'm not going to go under contract with them because that doesn't make any sense. Totally. So that was part of the delay. That's, That's like right. a song that never ends. But no. so it would have really, really helped if those turds didn't tag. Oh, the timing of it was so great. I was just thinking about it on my way oh. here today. But yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm drawn but, to have finally have I know. Yeah. All yeah. All yeah. All yeah. these years. Yeah. It's been 20 years. Right. Yeah. And there's been a lot of tagging around that area, there, not just on the car. There really has been. Yeah. Yeah. So. But this is a perfect example of when choosing and commissioning artwork, we look at materials and decide what can hold up over time to public use and abuse, right? Um, and it's one of the reasons that I'm such a stickler about sealants and graffiti. And I you know that on the murals, there are a lot of communities that don't invest in the primers and the sealants. Um, but in 20 years, in 15 years, in 10 years, you know, they're going to have to make some big decisions about getting rid of it or reinvesting twice as much as they put in. So, um, yep, we've got to take care of our stuff. So. OK. Any questions? Anybody have any questions about that? Number 12, Collier Park, label and signage. So I have the graph, so I have the graphic design um, pretty well done. And uh, the cost to do one is astronomical versus the cost to do a number, as you have all known. But um, we have temporary signage out at Collier now, and uh, I think that it's working-ish. Um, Laura and I got to go rock shopping, so that was fun. I um, rocks. Yeah, I know, right? Oh, I never knew how to buy rock tax exempt before last week, but um, <laughs> so. Yeah, it's out there too. Yeah, oh my gosh, oh. It's out there. Yeah, well, it's actually cobble because <laughs> you we looked at the big rocks and they were too big, and they're like $500. Oh, and then oh, I was like, $500. Rock. This rock in this pile of rocks. That's like this big, and it's still like too heavy for somebody to pick up. A backstory, this piece and some of our other pieces have had labels on them with posts in the ground that have been concreted in, and I don't know if somebody's kung fu fighting or whatever, just like kicks it and takes it out, and so then there's no label anymore. So, but backstory too is that we've invested previously in these giant brass plaques, but you've spent hundreds of dollars on them and they're not in Spanish. You can't put a QR code on them. They're not easy to change in and change out. So we're switching this whole project up to something that's aluminum and we can kind of be more malleable with. There's um, a picture right there of a rock with a sign. Yeah, and that is an old, you know, brass plaque and whatever. That, and that's fine. But in this day and age, we have a lot more information that needs to be on those plaques. Um, so instead of doing the post in the ground for this particular Collier Park, um, we bought a rock. And it was so much trouble for the guys to figure out, number one, how they were going to load it in our van into our wheelbarrow and do tax exempt and use my credit card. They were like, please, just take the rock. <laughs> <laughs> and, but it did make them weigh it and tell me how much it was going to cost because we were looking at these beautiful big boulders for hundreds of dollars a ton or whatever. He's like, $11.80. I was like, sir. I will be back and I will spend money here, <laughs> but we're going to take our rock and be done with this. It was, it, it was like days of work, but we have a rock. So was there Colorado materials that you went to? Uh, yeah, the Pioneer. Yeah, yeah. Over in Ocean Realm. They were lovely. They were lovely. 
Um, but yeah, even just getting on the phone with them and be like, okay, I need to buy a rock, and it's, it needs to be like this, and I don't know how much that weighs, and it's gotta kind of be flat, and it's like, oh my god, just come and see where we are. Like, like, uh, so anyway, now I know. I'm totally ready to go rock shopping again. No problem. And it is sitting there at the base of the sculpture right now. Yes. It is, yeah. So then we didn't know how we were gonna unload it, and so we were all these like garden tools and keep it digging, and it took like, I don't know, five minutes, ten minutes, and then we were able to like, Get it in there. He just like flipped it out of the truck, <laughs> into the wheelbarrow, pushed it over. This is a missed opportunity like, for the Instagram page. <laughs> it was embarrassing. It was asleep like, for the rock. Yeah, it's actually. the best time. The rock was just like, man, this is what I can do as now. <laughs> Uh, yeah, like, it was adventure. Yeah, and maybe the parts department, they were like, just have it delivered, we can't help you. I was like, no! Okay. Yeah, the delivery was the be. That's it's probably the best. It's a better adventure. So but we have a rock, I'm working on labels, I promise we're, we're getting there. It's just, it's a bit. Uh, Did you write, watch the space on it? Oh, that's a great <laughs> idea. Sure. Um, yeah, so that's it. Okay. All right, so and you're getting multiple bids for the signs for the pieces that have no sign. You're starting there. Oh, yeah. All right. Wait, oh, I have yeah. one more comment yeah. on the yeah. top. Um, we did, you know, Nettie and I did go down to the Tyco oh. concert in Collier, and our, we had the AIPP pop up there, and we had real fun. I had a fun time anyway. And um, we were very near the sculpture, and part of what we're supposed to do is keep the kids, but there were so many parents there that we didn't really, it, did, it wasn't really worth part. Everyone was on good behavior in the park. Because they saw you there, though. If you weren't there, they would have been planning on it, no doubt. But well, yeah, that's true. I have seen the kids vault up there in an the NFC yeah. more than once. Okay. okay. Well, as we can okay. see, our next item is the Safety Justice Center. Uh, so you may have seen in the newspaper and on social media and everywhere that the Safety and Justice Building um, Rehabilitation Project is in a phase where they've had to move the entrance mm -hmm. to the other side of the building and they will start rehabilitating uh, the, the, this north side, which is going to be extremely publicly visible and when folks start seeing how uh, the clock tower and the artwork are going to be coming down, I can't imagine that there might be screams and yells and really upset folks, which is a fine. And the city, not just uh, myself and our both places, us, but also the facilities department, the safety and justice, I'm saying the department wrong, um, but those, those folks that work in that building, uh, we have a communication plan for the community. So when people come to us and say, well, what about the thing and the thing and the thing? I say, I can tell you about the public art. Um, if you have questions about the other bits and pieces and things, here are the people you can talk to. We have party lines ready to go. Um, no, we cannot salvage materials from this project because it is so, they're taking down so much that to be able to dig and get um, bits and pieces out, it's just not possible. So, if, and, and you as the public can't come and take souvenirs. No, please, please, stay on the other side of the fence, yeah. So if um, you see something out on social media, if somebody says, you're on our public places, how did this happen? Please just send them to me so I can get them to the communications department so we can just assure folks um, all of their big, bad, scary questions. If anybody sees comments on social media, let Angela know. Yes. Please, what you saw. If you respond, you respond of your own accord, not on behalf of our public places, please. Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yes, and we have the exception of this piece yes. last year. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So it's not, it's not really our public place anymore, but it was. Yes. Correct. All right. History under wraps. Okay, so our fall selection for History Under Wraps is going to be coming about. We will need a task force for photo research and the project. Basically what it means <laughs> is that you will be looking at a, a series of photos from the archive and bringing um, ones that you think would be interesting for the traffic cabinets um, to the, the task force and then we'll review and decide on a, a, a smaller number, a six to be exact. Um, and I put this one up because it's the best photo I think. 
1980 at the fair, and like the one girl's gonna barf, and like, all their hair's going and things. And then when we spec it out on the traffic cabinet, it doesn't work like at all. Like, That's too bad. Because yeah, every you know. Um, these photos, of course, are mostly originals, mostly from the archive, a lot from thousands of them from Times Call, so the resolution um, sometimes can be different um, based upon you know, what the photo's condition is in the beginning. Um, so it actually is quite a bit of work of finding just, like, just the right photo that fits just the right way. And I think that the group who did it previously did a great job. Um, we are going to be doing, of course, 12 of these a year, six in the fall and then six in the spring. So there's lots of opportunity for anybody who wants to participate to do it. Um, I just want to be, you know, really up, uh, up for, front about the photo research kind of takes a long time. I think I will have a little bit more guidance for you of, of the specs that you're looking for so you can think of the, the image needs to be a little bit further away so we can really crop um, to get it to the spec size. Um, and then um, that there will be two meetings and trying to make sure that, you know, when more meeting works kind of with everyone. So if you're an evening meeting kind of person, like maybe we try to get evening people together for one season. And then if you're like a morning kind of person for meetings, like we should try to do it that way. So, um, and with that, I'm ready to get going on this. So yeah, I'd like to say that uh, going through the museum archives is really easy because you get to the archive and you think, what? What do I want to look up? I want to look up pumpkins, and you type in pumpkins, and then you get all these pictures that have to do with pumpkin pie day, and farming, and pumpkins. It's really fun, and then you think, I want to look at trains, and then you get all these train pictures, and so it's not like just paging through one, two, three, yeah. four, it's trying really to figure out. You think about different things, flooding, and you get flood pictures. And it's really, it's really fascinating. I really enjoy it. it. It's, it's kind of, it, it's like a historical marker of yeah. Longmont, and it's and you stuff you didn't even think they, you yeah. know. Oh wow! Indians. Yeah, well, I'm like, motorcycles. Yeah, I mean, whatever. You know, just all these things. It's really wow. interesting. And I didn't even realize we chose that Corvette that's at yes. Third and Martin, and I didn't even realize that that was like the um, county fair or something because it's yeah. got the it's got the little uh, uh, yeah. county fair queen or whoever sitting in the back. Oh, I didn't even realize that we're looking at the picture. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. great. I love that picture. I like the motorcycles. And then to add to it, um, you know, this was another great opportunity for us to work on our mission of getting the museum visibility out into the community through public art. So uh, there is, of course, an online tour through our online tour platform for our art on the move right now. Um, these, which we'll continue to do, and I'm forgetting what else, the Quail Campus and downtown. So we have four right now. Okay. Um, for folks to visit and see these things um, outside of in person in the mm -hmm. digital world. Have we got uh, an idea about which boxes? No, I would like to go back to our friends in traffic and say, look at how successful they, they were. were. Like, yeah. I don't, I know that you are concerned about yeah. these being yeah. very distracting. Like, okay, 17th and Main, no, we're never going to put one there. Okay, yeah. But, but along Main, I know that it's a state highway, but I think we can make some exce exceptions. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna go take us some chocolate and <laughs> <laughs> say I mean, talk about all you have to do is look at Loveland. That's what I was they're, about to say. They're all yes. on to it. They're on to a set. Right, and they look like people who are gonna jump out into the intersection because that's the one thing that the director of traffic told me is like he was worried that people were gonna get confused that it was a human about ready to go. So I don't even stop for the humans. I know. <laughs> One that we have with figures that are the most life size is the motorcycle picture yeah. at Pratt and Pratt. Yeah. And I love it's, that. it's the very yeah. success one. But there's cigarettes in there. I know there's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really good. So um, so oh, no, so we don't know because if like. we chose oh, okay. the cabinets that they've okay. given us already, they're kind of meant. So I'm gonna fight for more visible 
Yeah. yeah. Okay. But you get to choose that too. If you sit on the task force, that also is a big part of this. Do we need, which do we need to see a show of hands? Yeah, we can all see it. Working on it. Yeah? Okay. All right, one, okay. two, three, hold on. Um, six, 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 six. Jenny and Nettie and Scott and Danielle. I thought it was Eve. Eve and Danielle and. Great. Okay, fantastic. Um, it's a, there's pretty much homework that you get to start with. Um, Susan Yeager. Jaeger's thinking. Thank you, Susan. Okay, Susan. All right. I'm doing my best. Okay, and that's that. History and the rest. Okay, and everybody's favorite topic, maintenance. How are we doing on the maintenance? I did mine. Good, I'm doing better. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, I'm gonna call them and look for some of our danger dangers. I can tell you right now, uh, we need to address left hands picnic. Um, it's time and the community that's wants- That's the fountain that's right out front here. No, it's the- No, um, no that's it's the couple. Oh, it's, it's, the, it's the angry ants. Because left hands. It did, left hands picnic. That's it's the ants. It's yeah. the ants. Yeah. Ants. yeah. Ants. Um, so, uh, with all good intention, there are people who just really want to take paint cans out there and get it done, and I'm like, please don't. So, uh, that's, I think, the biggest one. Uh, but yeah, so next month, we'll bring up the list again, and then we'll assign maintenance. Go from there. I think we're going to assign maintenance first, and then we'll talk about which ones we're going to prioritize for 2025. Does anybody need any maintenance <laughs> printouts <laughs> currently? Okay. Okay, new business, anyone? We're pretty full of business. <laughs> yeah, we're pretty full of business. Commissioner of Comments, how's it going? Court, court beat. Okay. okay. <laughs> Susan, you're good. Then I need a motion to adjourn. Everybody wants to say. <laughs> motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. And Melanie seconds. Okay. All in favor? Two, three, four, five, six. Five. Five. <laughs> well, any opposed? No. Any abstentions? No. And we are adjourned at 737. Woohoo!